we are off. Hello again, this is Fallgrown with another installment of Flight School Economics. For this, the 26th of February, 2952, or 2022 if you're stuck in the past. This presentation is part of an ongoing series of academics for the members of the Aurora Republic, the premier role-playing organization in Star Citizen. If you are new to the Aurora Republic or visiting for the first time, let me start by saying welcome. We're glad to have you with us. Love to hear more from you. If you're interested in hearing more from us, we're a lawful good organization. Focus on role play, exploration, and social interaction. Are currently active in recruiting on Spectrum and Gilded. All night should be fairly quick. Uh, we're going to go over. Um, we're going to go over simple radio standalone SRS as it's uh, better known, um, because more is always better. <clears throat> Anywho, um, you can download it from the following uh, web address there, um, which is also posted down in our resources section on uh, Gilded. Um, so you can download uh, Simple Radio Standalone, install it, um, and it's fairly easy uh, to get configured. But we're going to go over how to do that. Um, Simple Radio Standalone uh, is a standalone VoIP application that is deliberately made so it simulates uh, aviation radios both in their use and in some of the uh, sound effects uh, processing on the client side um, where you'll hear uh, static in the background and, and squelch breaks and you can add radio chirp and all that sort of thing. Um, it's not specifically associated with any existing software applications. It is its own standalone uh, um, software. However, it was originally developed by the DCS community uh, and is uh, altogether pretty awesome. Um, it is very lightweight. It does not use hardly any um, resources on your computer uh, while it's running in the background. So it does stay uh, quietly back and out of the way without uh, sucking up too much, um, too much on the, uh, uh, the old resources meter. And uh, it is open source and it's free, which is always a, a huge, a huge um, bonus in in uh, our org. We always like to look for things that are open source and free to uh, 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 let people's wallets breathe as much as possible. Um, the uh, client configuration window after you install and you open it up, um, it'll open up looking like this. Uh, this one, this screenshot was taken from version 1.95. Uh, they're up to 1.9.9. Um, so there has been an update. Uh, the, uh, it's got five tabs across the top, general controls, favorites, settings, and help, of course. Um, and the general tab on front is where you actually do all the setup to get connected to the server. We run our own dedicated SRS server. Uh, it's associated with our website. It's hosted on our website's um, hosting service. So uh, it is 100% under our control and not uh, accessible outside of the org. Um, the data you see here in this screenshot is all false, so do not copy any of this because um, if you are um, if if your DCS or excuse me if your SRS client is not automatically set up to connect you to our server, you can find the server um, address and name and passwords uh, down on on Gilded. You'll find it down on the main uh, hub page down where it shows uh, where it says resources in the very top one this is AR server info so you can go look in there and that has the uh, uh, connection information for all of the servers that um, both game servers SRS server all that sort of thing that that the Aurora Republic maintains um, you connect to the server uh, and then the second thing you need to know is the AM coalition password so let me uh, get my rusty trusty oop, laser pointer Okay, so you put in the uh, server connection information here. You hit connect. Um, it'll then show that one will turn green when you are connected. Then uh, you put in the EAM coalition uh, password, which simply stands for external AWACS mode, which is also this button down here. You put in that password, give yourself a name um, so that we know who you are. Just make this the same as your Gilded uh, or your RSI account name or what, you know, what your, your moniker, whatever your moniker is. And then the, so there's two buttons when you have the information and there's two buttons. First, you got to connect to the server, which gets you there. Then you hit disconnect, excuse me, you hit connect to external AWACS mode. And that one will make this VoIP one and you are now connected and up and running. Um, uh, uh, you, ha you need to keep the client window open even after the radio stack comes up. You just minimize it down to the taskbar. If you reach up here and hit close up there, it actually does close the software and close the and, and your radio stack will go away. Um, also in the channel channel tab, you can set up your your audio setup for microphone and speakers, headset, whatever. 
and then if you are like streaming or something, you can actually have a pass through as well if you wanted to uh, set up either whether or not you want like only game audio to go out to the to the um, stream, but not your SRS, or if you want that part of it too, you can actually set all that stuff up uh, here. Um, already talked about all that sort of stuff uh, and those icons down there. The uh, other two, the game and the L, the lot ATC um, will should stay black and unconnected throughout the entire use, the way we're using it. Uh, the second tab is controls. This is where you can do all your keybinds for all your SRS functions. Uh, there is, of course, a push to talk. Um, you can also have uh, any um, device button or keyboard button that you have assigned to any of the radios. Um, if you simply leave them here as radio, then this will be just switched to that radio and you use this push to talk. Or, depending on the uh, settings that we'll hit here in another tab, you can actually have it where this radio button is also a push to talk all at once. Um, so you just hit set, then you hit the next. So after you hit set, the next button you hit um, on whichever device. So it'll say keyboard and which button on the keyboard you hit, or it'll say joystick and you know button 19 or whatever it was, wherever you set. Um, and if you want to clear that particular keybind, you just hit clear. Um, yep, push to talk is uh, the minimum. Um, that's one way. Then you have to like switch to the different radios, and you can use the same push to talk key. Or I can also show you here in a second where you can hit into settings and have the same switch that switches from radio one to radio two is also a push to talk. Uh, favorites, this is where you want to save that server information that I told you to get off of Gilded. Um, you can save that and you can set multiple um, multiples, uh, servers and have one set as your default. Uh, this again, all of this information is bogus. So uh, if anybody's watching this later, you're not gonna be sneaky and get on by looking at that IP address. That's a, a very, very old and now defunct IP address. Okay, on the settings tab, this is where you can kind of configure how you want uh, SRS to behave, um, auto connect, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and these these windows here are just scrolling down on the same way. It's only one window, it just keeps scrolling down. Uh, you can set profiles for all of these different settings as you like them. Um, right below the profile box where it says profile settings, this is where you can have radio switch look works as a push to talk. Where So what I told you earlier, I was showing you where you can put it so that the switch to radio one is also a push to talk. So you can have maybe just a, uh, if you have two different keys on your uh, HOTAS setup, you could have this. If, if you pull the key up, it switches to radio one and is a push to talk. And if you push the key down, it switches to radio two and is a push to talk. That's where you can set that up. Um, you can also do radio effects, so you can turn those on and off. And then all of this stuff, of course, saves under uh, different profiles, so you can create a, a profile. I believe it defaults with all of the sound effects turned off, so it'll just sound like you're talking. It really won't sound any different than Gilded. Um, it'll be nice, clean uh, audio. Um, but if you wanted to make a little bit of static hiss in the background and uh, squelch breaks when you key and unkey the mic and all that sort of stuff, that is all on the um, client side. So if I want to have that sound in the back of, in, in my headset, so it sounds realistic, like I'm tran transmitting and receiving over a radio, but you don't, um, it, it's only on our computer. So I will hear it and you won't. If I have mine set up to make those radio sound effects and you don't, um, we can each hear the same words of each other's talking, but we won't hear the sound effects because that's produced locally on your computer before it pumps it. The last thing it does before it pumps it from what it received out to your headset um, is it adds in those uh, uh, radio um, sound effects. Uh, and a lot of stuff there, I'm not gonna belabor all of them. You can even, uh, if you want to um, do some left-right balance on different radios, which is a technique that's used in fighters um, if, who are running multiple radios to have, you know, hey, radio one is louder in my left ear than it is my right ear. Radio two is louder in my right ear than it is my left ear. <clears throat> so you can, um, on the fly, you can identify which radio you're being talked to at um, so that you can key the correct one and respond back to the correct person. Um, there's a lot of, back when I very first started flying F-16s, you had two radios and that was it. Um, now they've technically got, well, more than four. Um, A-10 has had more than four for a whole lot of time and don't even don't even uh, talk to an air battle manager who rides on the back of an AWACS. 
Um, they've got 69,000 radios and they can have massive communication channel overload in their head if they don't have techniques like this to be able to fix it. Um, and then of course the health tab is all self-explanatory. It has lots of information on there on things you can do and where you can get help and if you have find a bug where you can um, put that in. Okay, so now the most important part is the actual overlays, the radio stack themselves. Once you um, are logged in on the server and um, you have, um, you've you connected to the external AWACS mode, EAM, um, you have two different radio overlay, radio stacks we call them. One that's called the uh, radio overlay and the other one that's called the AWACS overlay. Um, the radio overlay uh, is a stack of four radios that are shown to you. You actually still have the same full stack as you have as you do if you use the AWACS overlay, um, but uh, it's only the first four are shown to you. Uh, each one of these slider bars is its own individual volume. So um, if you are not using a radio and don't want it to be interrupted if somebody talks on it, you just uh, slide those all the way down to the far left. The tab up here that says UHF guard or VHF FM and all that stuff is not what this radio is. It's what guard frequency, whether it's UHF guard or VHF guard, that this radio, if it has its guard monitoring turned on, which one is it? This one's going to be monitoring a UHF guard um, versus this one that would be doing a VHF guard. Each of these radios um, are actually omni radios as they're designed. So they can actually transmit anywhere from the VHF range all the way up into the UHF range. So you can put in, even though this is VHF or UHF guard here, and this is a VHF uh, frequency down in the 100s, uh, you know, 126.85 is down at the VHF band. Um, that doesn't mean that this is a UHF only radio. These are all omni radios that can um, uh, uh, transmit and, and receive across any of those spectrums. Uh, the intercom is a server wide. So this is the way you can talk to everybody at once is if you click on the intercom and just talk, it's gonna ignore frequencies of everybody and it's just gonna broadband transmit to everybody who's hooked up to the server. So obviously we don't really use that. Um, so we would uh, uh, probably want that slid down all the way uh, off. Uh, transponder is only functional in DCS. So as far as Star Citizen is concerned, you can just ignore that one completely. It's totally does not work if you're not specifically in DCS. Um, you can encrypt that encryption uh, ENC tab opens up encryption key. It just it's just a code number. You hit enable and now um, it, and now it will sound if somebody else is on the same frequency, but they are not on that encryption uh, key and have it enabled. Every time you talk, all they're going to hear is and they will not be able to understand what you say. The only people who will be able to send it is if they have the if they go to that same encryption key and then enable it. Uh, it does the radio FX again on the client side for both have quick two anti jam radios and the KY58 secure communications, as I just described to you here. Um, we uh, can also pre-program channel presets. So you can just have, hey, load channel one, channel two, channel three, and it automatically uh, punch up the frequency for that. That is a, um, it's just a text file that we can set on the server that says, hey, this is the Aurora Republic's standard preset radios. We have not done that. So when you, uh, if you happen to click on that uh, channel tab, it'll just be blank. Um, the AWACS overlay has a stack of 10 radios, five wide by two tall. Um, these all 10 of these radios are actually and the intercom are actually um, operating all of the time even if you're back here on the stack of four that stack of four is uh, these uh, four top four from the left to the right those four radios are the same as the uh, uh, vertical stack under the radio overlay so um, the AWACS overlay has eight uh, combo UHF VHF uh, plus guard capable radios and two FM radios. Uh, the radio overlay version just takes these first four, which ends up giving you um, immediate control over three and one. Uh, plus they both have, have the intercom and that bottom slider that is unmarked on both of these, these bottom sliders are unmarked is a opacity for the interface. So if you slide that left, the uh, radio stack will get, you know, see-through down to whatever level you want. Any questions? Because that was fairly fast.
Uh, but we've also hit this um, multiple times before. Uh, so tonight we would like to attempt to use uh, SRS um, for everybody while we do our, our role play uh, op operation here. Uh, I so I hope you guys got it set up. Red, go ahead. Uh, so Comms check on 251. So uh, can you actually take this, uh, this overlay and overlay it in Star Citizen? Or is that possible? Uh, it should stay, uh, I believe it stays top in a window. So if you drag that over top of Star Citizen, you will be, it will stay on, t on, on a layer uh, on top of your game window. Um, I have a second monitor, so I've never tried it. Uh, but here, let me go ahead and do it. I've got it up right now. See, so I've got it up over top of my, and even if I, how do I turn off my, ah, there it is. There we go. Yeah, so even if I uh, am running my PowerPoint slide show, you see how it stays up if you're looking at the um, at the stream. So it stays up, and if I drag that, if I drag that uh, bottom slider, it becomes opaque or transparent, semi-transparent. You can drag it around, so it should stay on top of of any windows you stick it on top of. Any other questions? Okay, it was it, it, it just wasn't working in Star Citizen, so it might be just me. I'm just not able to fiddle with it. Okay, good enough. No, okay. Any other questions? Going once? Going twice? Nope. Okay, cool. That wraps up this installment of Academics of Foghorn. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you have any questions I didn't answer, please feel free to contact me via email, Gilded Spectrum, or of course the comment section below if you're watching this at a later date. I will answer it to the best of my ability, which basically means as soon as I see it. Uh, member or visitor like, please hit those follow and subscribe buttons as appropriate and leave us a comment as uh, the feedback does get read and we are always striving to improve our content. You can find out more about the Aurora Republic at our bespoke website, aurorarepublic.space or of course on Spectrum at robertspaceindustries.com slash orgs slash Aurora Rep. I will see you next time. This is Foghorn signing off, wishing you a very pleasant remainder of your morning, afternoon, and evening. Thank you so very much for watching.